Welcome back to Finnegan's Farm, welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome back to our workshop Wednesday. My name is Paul and this is our team. Hi, I'm Sean Kyo and I'm the apprentice mechanic. Hi, I'm Mick and I'm the mechanic. Hello, I'm Marco, I love to weld. This is Bruce, this is Blake, them is two best students. Well, what's the story? I'm Kieran Ross, I'm the apprentice mechanic. Hello, I'm Carl, and I'm the one that has to make these guys look good. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos and comment what you want. Just put it in the comment system. We'll get back to you. So, in for repair today, we have our Suzuki Jimmy, we have a John Deere 6910, and we have a Knievel and Plough. So just before we start off there, with the potato season just around the corner there, we will be looking for extra help on the farm, both part-time and full-time. So if you're the man or the woman, who think they can qualify for this job there, send your CV into info at Finnegan's Farm. Dot .ie there and we will get back to you there on that. So first of all we're going to head over to Caleb there, I think he's a few problems there with the 6910. Well Caleb, what's the story here? Well look, the wind this morning for something wrong with the fold of ropes and I'm nearly here. Yeah. I can't even think really. It's better off now to get it into the shade. Yeah, I'm just waiting to put off this depth. So the arm was usually something happens. Yeah. Or do we have to break off? Yeah, it was moving. It wasn't coming out. So I think here, if I'm right, yeah. Here we oh. go. So we may blame Alex on this one. Generally, we blame John B, but I think Alex is doing John B. We're back to school this week as well. So we have to break something before he goes. Yeah. Not him. Actually, he only moved it from one side of the yard over to here. And he has three things wrong with air leak, pinch gun, and the fog of that. So we're just doing a few last checks here on the PG 100 7 for reverse play. There's some people might want to know what, what does PG 100 stand for? So it's actually the distance from one board to the next. So we take the tip of this board here and we put the tape across it there. It gives us exactly 100 mil across that. So that's, that's your, your PG 100, that's what it stands for. A few important points to be made on before you put a tractor on the plow. Obviously like your link rods they are at the same length so we've measured these and uh, these two arms, drop arms, are the exact same length especially on the semi, semi mounted plow. Uh, everything else then, pipes are in place, they coordinate up there though at least we can pull the near lever it'll tip over. It all depends there on, on driver choice there to where he wants to you know the lever's been pressed. So another important thing to mention too is tyre size and tyre pressures in the tractor. This tractor here is on 620s um, as you can see here with the tape across and with 620s. Now they're, they're probably okay there. You can have bigger tyres on them. We have 650s and 710s and that's when you have to maybe sometimes change the, the boards on the plough that can allow for a bigger tyre size. Obviously then to have your correct pressure on your tractor and to have your tractor well ballast is well weighted as you can see here we've weighed from the inside here of the inner 8410 and we've a front linkage and a set of weights out the front and they just keep the tractor balanced and um, keep the weight keep the contact right down you want to get as many lugs as you can on the ground when you're plowing so you might have to run them at a little bit low pressure uh, to do that job but once you've got that set up then you should have no problems you just don't want as you can see here with some of these tires here when they're in the furrow wall they can get grubbed and can get uh, slipped and stones and that can cause these tires to uh, to wear like they did, did here but that's just part of a tractor that's that's doing the plowing it's going to get that and anyway a few other things to mention then is that we want to check the the auto reset on the plow because if we do hit anything the plow needs to be able to kick and to reset to where it should be so on these plows here this system here it's, it's been used in the Knievel and Plows for many, many years. It's just a spring system. We have them on here. We have helpers on the, on the insides of these, uh, and that's mostly for when we're playing for potato ground that we need to go that bit deeper, and that's why we put the helper springs. But on, in today's video there, we want to change the pins, roll pins here. We have new pins and rods that we're going to change because there's a little bit of wear starting to come into them there, and we're just going to fix them up there and leave them right. So we're going to head over to Mick here. So we're just after replacing, putting new pins in here. Uh, this is the AHO reset system on the Knievel and Plough. And uh, you can see there is a, a big long rod that goes right through the beam in the plough and is connected in here with this pin. So it's important then that we set the plough back up the way it should be for the AHO reset. This pin then coming off the manual there should be between two and three mil just off the side wall mm -hmm. of, the, of the plough body there. And the idea of that is that when the spring flexes, that the pin has room to travel to the centre 
rather than being over one side and hitting it off the side. Because we have seen that before when they haven't been set properly, that the, 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 that will bend and sometimes it will break. So it's important that we get that. So we're after new roll pins, new pins in here, and we're after setting it up. It's 70 centimeters from this pin to that far pin. And how you know that, actually on the Canadian plough, they put two little notches here, just for uh, easiness sake there. One notch there, one notch there. This is your plough spanner then that can do all the adjustments. Generally is a long one, because these can be quite tight, so it's important there that get a bit of free and aisle into those, loosen them out, put a bit of free and aisle. So hopefully Nicholas is going to set one up here. We'll set this number six body up. So we have that freed out. We'll run this up then, make us not hit. Not much. Turn around 48 and the other one. Okay. Yeah. Listen here then. Uh, 28. Oh, yeah, 28 and a half. Come on, 10 mil. It's actually not bad there. Give that a touch more, that one. This one, yeah. That one was 48 and another one. And we're 51. Right, that's how good we're going. 50, close. 50 mil, and that one's there. And we'll just get the tape just to measure it here. We need to go another 8 mil. It needs to go another little bit. That should throw it out here then as well. Did that hang there for a second. Touch more, Rick. Touch more. You good now? That's good. Yeah. So we're at 70 mil there between 70. Yeah, between those two pins, and we're just about probably three mil there. Hard to know, but we can put mm -hmm. it. So there's exactly mm -hmm. where the line should be. So that means when the spring goes out, the rod can flex as well. So that's fairly simple. Just another thing to mention, that we also, on these ploughs here, these are number 28 bodies, they come with 28s and number 8s, a series of different bodies. The idea of that is that you get a longer body there for sometimes ploughing with a, a tractor with a wider wheel. Uh, this is number 28, it allows it two stays on it because it's actually that, just that bit longer. So just a few little tips there on the plough there, but the um, most important thing is now we need to get to the field. And you have Alan, going to head off shortly now, getting ready to plough. So you have a good behind, have you, Alan? Yeah, there's plenty on. Yeah? You've got about four or five hundred yeah, acres of rape there to plough. Rape ground and... And what's set. the story, will you plough it all on your own or will you get John B to give you a hand? Oh, he might come and do a bit. Yeah, you never know. Yes. So just, just a few checks on the plough. Um, this is the 7-4 reverse, but now obviously to have good points on now this time yes. of year because it's kind of, ground will be very tough and hard. It'll be hard, hard to get into the ground, so new points. Is... Yeah, so new points, new wings. We've completely new metal the whole way on the plough and uh, yeah, the Knievel and PG Honda there, the great plow there, just very good plow, yeah. Very good plow, nice bit of clearance on it. We have our new arms on here, which you would have seen in the videos. New crook ends welded on, new drop arms on them as well, new pins all bushed out there. Hopefully now that should keep should you going for the rest of the season. Everyone's tightening it now. Right, so the next time you're going to see him, he's going to be in the field. So we're here with the Suzuki Jimny, or Jimmy. I think we'll call it Jimmy Mick for the simple reason that it's easier to pronounce than Jimny. Yeah. Um, we have our, yeah, we're after doing a big job on it here, as you can see. <coughs> the, the purpose of this machine, why we bought, was that we wanted something to spread slug pellets with. Now, we had looked at a few gear and quads and things like that. And actually, it was Mick here that suggested maybe, maybe why not look at the Jimny or the Jimmy because these are a good while on the go, aren't they? Make you would so have my, experience with these. My wife has a Suzuki Grand Batari, little sharp wheel based one, and she absolutely loves it. Yeah. So I mean, they are, they are very reliable. Very reliable. So we've made a little trailer here for the back of it, and we have our KRM slug pellet applicator sitting up here. So this will be the unit then. It's only a matter of hooking on onto the ball hitch then and running our wire there. We have the cable there, which we will show you there. It all fitted up in it. Now the slug pellets can be hard, they can be corrosive, and that's why we want to keep it away from, from the Jeep. And we had it on the back of a gator and it was the same on the gator. Now this is a purpose built um, Quad trailer. Tr trailer for it. Now we have raised it up a little bit here just to give us a bit of height and it is galvanized there so we should have no rust issues. No and as you can see from some of the rust here on the KRM, 
they wouldn't just... Uh, that's only two years old or three Yeah, that machine's only two years old. So, I mean, the paintwork was absolutely terrible and that. You'd run them, but these manufacturers there, you know, cost a lot of money to buy an applique like this and then the paint falling off it a year or two in, later. In so, layers. In layers, yeah. So, as you can see, it's either... That's not powder coated, is it? It's probably power, powder coated there where it kind of comes off there in, in sections. Because that's a frame there we manually painted, isn't it? Right? Yeah, that, there's our own frame there, okay, which, you, which you can see. That's, actually, that's, off, the paint, that's that. off the previous one. Yeah. That frame. Yeah, because I painted that in the old workshop. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we have them mounted on there now. We're just not quite sure on the heights there yet. We will get it to the field. We have our new tyres fitted there, which uh, look the business there. There are plenty of ground clearance. Yeah, plenty of ground clearance underneath it, which was probably the most important thing. And the fact about the Jimny is that you still have an awful lot of comfort creatures in here in, in the cab like that. Now, the lads did mount the whole com complete screen in here, done a fantastic job on it here. Caelan was went mad there on the stainless steel welding stainless steel welding there and they've done a lovely job well, on solid. there so it's all solid there it's all built around around the driver here as well he has gps there which you can see up on top there and he has his easy guide screen the 250 screen the here. wire then runs just very very simple little wire there comes up and that's a little area there for the receiver for the easy guy there and we can just clip it down here runs back the whole way to it so now we may still put a camera into it there <laughs> Mick is not impressed here, but anyway. More wires. Hubble, <clears throat> Hubble will probably want the camera on it there for more wires. But we have it run off the battery there. Good alternator on, on, on a Jeep like this as well. And you probably do need that there for a little bit of yeah, power requirement. When we had this on the gator, we had problems with it because it's pulling 25 30 amps. Yeah. And the gator the charging system wasn't up to that. Yeah. So we were flattening the battery on it. We ended up putting an alternator on it. And that wasn't a an major easy job. success. Yeah. But uh, the Jimny there, we just run through the spec and it's 1.5 petrol. Hmm. Um, power steering, five speed box in it here. Cruise control, isn't it? Cruise control in it, yeah. There's a la lane control in it, uh, air conditioning yep. in it, Bluetooth radio. A lot of comforts there that you, you won't find on the likes of a Gehar. And you know, if you take the trailer off there, you can use it there around the farm there. It'll still do 100 and I think I had it 120 k there, probably shouldn't have had 100 k mm. anyway. And I could tip along the motor there, no bother with it. It's an absolutely lovely little Jeep to drive. Now, it is small, it's not, uh, it's a bit, it's weighing, come in just under the ton weight, I think, there for. 1.1. Uh, yeah, 1.1 ton. That was with you in it, though. So, uh, an ordinary, an ordinary gator would, <coughs> would probably come in at the ton. Uh, it has the 330 tax in it there, the commercial tax on it. So, she's road le legal, ready for the road. And yeah, we're absolutely delighted with it now. We're grand to get it to the field here. Yeah. Cruise control, what else to be on it? No, there's a little, little gadget there on it there that you probably wouldn't see. So under the bonnet here we have a 1.5 petrol engine there. It's Japanese, I presume, is it, Mick? It's doing kind of very like a Toyota um, Corolla or that, because it has VVTI and all that on it. It's right. built in Japan, which is the main thing. I know that from the, you know that? There's a J there at the first of the chassis number. If it's right. W, it'll be Germany. I think England is S, I think. I'm not, I might be wrong on that. Yeah. <coughs> so then, from a wiring point of view, you took your power off the... Yeah, it has two supplies. This is one I put on. That's our main loom. We've 40 amp fuse on that because it's a high draw current on it. That one there, I think, is for the um, smart box for the tow bar. You have to have a light supply to that. And then we're across and in through an access hole over there. I'm trying to shine the light on there for you. Down there, there's a cable going in. Okay, I do yeah. always droop it down so water doesn't tend to go uphill. Okay. Just Good drop idea. it down a wee bit and you don't get a run of water down through into yeah, your car. Yeah, and then that's into the dash there on the yeah, front. Yeah, that's feeding. Then I, have it, I have it here on to it because we need to be able to disconnect it. <clears throat> I have an Anderson plug there, the grey one. That's our... Well, there's the football there, I don't know what the football is for, there must be for... Doggies. The dog, I'd say, yeah. yeah. Bruce yeah, Oblake. The dog looked like he got it anyway. Huh? Yeah, mm. well, she's well shot at this stage. That's our um, grey cable there, that's the power supply to come in. Going on to the loom, a lot of loom, but you can't really shorten them. Then we have our main cable here, coming in from the back. Which will have to be disconnected each time. That's the only, probably. So we still have loads of space there in the back, and yeah. Yep. But we really want them to put the bags, the slug pellet bags, in the trailer here, just to keep it away from the Jeep there, because as we said, they are kind of corrosive. They, they're kind of corrosive, and they do get oh, it's rotten stuff. And there. they do get everywhere, and it's yeah. absolutely terrible stuff. Because every year when we go out this, we have problems with the box in there. Yeah, yeah, it does. With connections, it just eats them. Yeah, as you can see, look, they're, they're going to get everywhere and they kind of go together the there. Concrete. Yeah, so just not that nice of stuff to be dealing no. with. Just poisons. So anyway, that's, that's a wrap. So now it's time for... Tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. So in this week's tips and tricks, we have Caleb here on board 
and we have our Milwaukee uh, battery operated grease gun. Now, an absolutely fantastic tool, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's a fantastic. So since we got the first one, we got three more since and two more. Yeah, now it does come with this little attachment. Just explain that there, yeah, how, so how handy that is. It's just a 90 degree fitting. Now, what this is absolutely fantastic for is, you know the way if you are using your grease gun and trying to keep pressure straight down on something, I know it does have the grip of the spring on it, but yeah. you can get a better push on it. And even for awkward ones, I know for greasing the four-wheel drive carrier bearing and all the John Deere's, that is the job for it. Yeah. Because you're just so little room. And even with these, they're not that flexible in near the end. But absolutely fantastic thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and absolutely most there on the farm. Now, in around, I'm not sure on the price of them, I think they're in around the 200 euro mark, yeah, isn't it? Just around the 200 euro mark for something like that. But look, you can look them up to fix any. There's plenty of companies there selling these. And they're absolutely, the Milwaukee one we probably found is probably one of the best ones there on the market. So in last week's video there, we had Mick with a little... Solder sucker. Solder sucker. And yeah, I mean, we had a lot of correct answers here. We had correct answers from... Uh, Drea Corelli, Peter Dooley, Casey, Tyke Furlong, not sure if he's the, the rugby player or not, but uh, we had Owen 100, Patrick Fogarty, Pat Lynch, Gerard McCarthy, Niall Daly, Jerry O'Connor, Brendan L and Lionel White there, so well done lads. But probably the best comment came from uh, Parik ESB, uh, who said it was actually for sucking Blackheads, Mick got a as great well, laugh. As well as Solder. As well as Solder, <laughs> there is for taking blackheads out of teenagers there, which uh, I don't, really, don't really think that's the job anyway, but uh, a great comment there, uh, Parry. Thanks for that. Now, we are going to demonstrate actually what it is, and we have a printed circuit board here because that's generally where um, a tool like this would be used. And if you can explain maybe your board, Mick, and, and how these pins yeah. are soldered in. That in the one there, just, the one I'm on is a fuse carrier. And if it gets more or burnt or melted, you can replace it on the board by heating up there. Kevin come in there with the sucker and we should go. And it pulls away the solder with releasing the pin. Yeah. Right? And you might have to keep at it two or three times, but generally it works very well. Then when you're done, get your solder. So just to explain it working then, you just load it down, it's just... Yeah, it's just spring loaded. It's so spring loaded, put your finger yeah. On it. You push it down into the detent. Put your finger on it, because and you can feel the suction coming up yeah. there. Stop so, it suction. Yeah, yeah. Go back. So then resolder, come in with the iron again. This is a gas iron, developed in Ireland, in Carlow, I believe. Brilliant in the field. A little bit of solder. Let the ball run down. And we look fairly good at that. Yeah. So it's a great job there. We're not alone the solder now, but the sucker as well there for doing jobs. Because we do see a lot of these printed circuit boards coming in a lot of the machines now anyway. You get dry joints on them as well. Yeah. Where the solder doesn't bond. So that's it. Now, well another done. uh guess the tool is this. Now it's a bit probably homemade, isn't yeah, it? Well, in a way. You can buy it but it'll still look the same, maybe a bit shiny. Yeah this is one that Kayla made at home. Uh the only little tip we'll give you it has a half inch drive there on that side of it. So Yeah and a half inch drive and grips on the Chibbled. And little, what, they're just kind of little welded bits on no, them? I just it? tacked them along with a weld up a bit of grip. Yeah, so let's see who is the, the smart ones <laughs> this week. So that's it for this week's workshop items. So don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos there. If uh, you have a comment there, put it in the comments just below and we will get back to you there. So from everyone here at Finnegan's Farm, we'll talk to you all next Wednesday.